Warning! This podcast contains spoilers. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the As Seen on TV podcast for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 4, Episode 19, All the Madam's Men. I'm your host, Mike, and joining me is Cleo and Rachel. Hello. First order of business. <laughs> hi, Sally in chat. Hi. I saw a hi Sally. pop up during the <laughs> intro sequence. Um, so. The title of this is, sounds very risque. But yeah, it it's it's kind of a oh. kind of a play on Humpty Dumpty. Yeah. Which I mean, can. Cons- Okay, so we had a major question. This is something we've been talking about the last, like, three weeks. And apparently Ada is plugged into the framework in that body. Yes. She's so plugging herself in. That answers a lot, because we've been <sighs> going back and forth between the it's another yeah. instance of Ada, or she's networked into multiple devices, or, you know, all kinds of other sci-fi AI stuff. But nope, 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 she's just interfacing directly. And she, also, can get out, and she can get out whenever she wants. Is anyone going to pick up that phone? Because I fucking called it. Uh, she wants to make herself a real a real girl. She wants to be a real girl. I mean, she wants to be I, just, I just forgot about the dark hold, so I forgot that that is a thing she can do. Yeah, the dark hold is such a major part of the Ghost Rider segment of this season that... I totally forgot about it. Yeah. We did, I did too. All of this was because Ada read the damn thing. Yeah. And... Tell, I think all four of us called that back when that happened, you know, it's gonna institute some sort of Skynet thing. Yeah. Or an iRobot sort of thing. Wasn't We no, kind of called a lot of this. My logic is undeniable. I was about to say, was the, wasn't the robot in, you know, the crazy AI called Ada in iRobot? But no, that was Vicky. Vicky, Vicky. Yeah. My logic is yeah. undeniable. But yeah, I, it's just so... Uh, like, she can act... Yeah, Jake's right. It, we all called it. I just think I said it first. Yeah. Um, it's really weird that she can get herself out of it. Where, like, she had to pull Radcliffe out. So, is a robots are a lot are you know since she's not human, she could pull herself out at any time. Well, it's well not she a, had to pull Radcliffe out because Radcliffe was going down the rabbit hole. No, he remember when um she had when he had a, a guest and he goes I told you not to pull me out for another hour or something like that. Right. And so, I don't know. Uh, she I don't, can pull can people out. No, she can pull people out from the yeah. outside. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But she, but she was inside, and she we saw she, her come she's out. She's plugging in with admin commands. She can do whatever the fuck she wants. <laughs> Even with she admin also got commands, uh, my computer still doesn't do what I want to. So. <laughs> Sorry, you can't. You don't have uh, authorization to do that. I own you. She got thrown into a coma, so maybe that had something to do with it. Yeah. However, whatever happened. She, I mean, last week we found out, hey, Terra Dune, Sky now has control of her powers. Ada found that out, too, this week. When she gets pitched out an elevator. Now, this is one of my... If that was any other human, she would have been dead, not just broken vertebrae. Now, this is one of my stupid, irrational fears, and that is glass, glass elevators on the outside of buildings. I see Chrissy mouthing, oh my god. Because she either thinks she's it's ridiculous basically... or she agrees with me. Well, elevators on their own, I have a phobia of, but she fell the probably exact same way that Steve jumped out the window and fell on his shield. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Except, Except she broke her spine. <laughs> I would say he had a vibranium shield to absorb the impact. She had her spine. Yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah. still impressive that she's not dead. Mm-hmm. And I still think of think that um, Fitz's dad's only there to keep Fitz in line. 
Probably. I mean, because it it seems like it more and more every time. Because Fitz, every time Fitz starts sinking, thinking outside of their little box, he always brings up his mom. If I wanted you to be like, you know, a wussy kid, basically, I would have left you with your mom. He always brings up something like that, and then Fitz snaps I back mean, at like it's almost like a trigger. Fitz's dad is what kept him evil. Is you know what made this Fitz <laughs> evil. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it stands to reason that Ada, you know, she took the regret. Blah, blah, blah. She took the regret away from each person, let the world play out, and then plugged herself into a position of power. You know, this is just probably happy coincidence because Fitz's dad is a real prick. Well, and then we know what what Fitz's dad's like now. Yeah, because Radcliffe tells him, you know, yeah, yeah. you know the real, is drunk? yeah, the real the Alistair loner, Fitz the is drunk. a drunk. He's you know a piece of crap and all this other stuff, and you know Fitz is he's what, alone. Fitz he's, is better off without him. Yeah, he's not. He is, and I think that's what triggered him. Yeah, that pissed him off. <laughs> and Radcliffe's right. Radcliffe's like. I have nothing to give you. I have nothing left to live for. I'm already dead on the outside world. So if you kill me in here, whoop de frickin' do. He does have a point. But no one's dead yet because we finally find out what Project Looking Glass is. Mm -hmm. So the basic so gist... I, I'm right. Yeah. If they throw Trip through there, uh -huh. we're going to have a real-life Trip on the other side. They can throw anybody they want through that. Like, you said Trip, we said Spark Ward. Plug. Fuck Ward. I'm I know, sorry. but that's how they're going to get Ward to continue on. That's how they're right, going to bring Brent Dalton back onto the good show. Good guy Ward. Without, yeah. Good, guy, good Ward. guy Ward. Good guy Ward. The real good guy that's Ward. Gonna, that's that's going to be hard. Big yeah. That's going to be hard for people to accept that this guy is a good guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to pop really out on the pop. outside and people, you know, just going to point and be like, ah! Right, but then again, at the same time, I think even though Daisy isn't the sky, he knows. I think uh, uh, she's almost thinking that if it does have, it's almost like their second chance. Mm -hmm. So, idea is it builds living matter. Ada figured out how to do that, and I mean, it's kind of an interesting way to go about. I, you know building a real body, but, you know, she plugs herself into the framework where she is a real flesh and blood, you know, she is a real girl, even though it's simulated. So now she just steps through some kind of portal, and it creates a living body for her on the other side. And I agree with Jake. He's in chat saying he thinks it cheapens their death. Doesn't like the idea I of bringing don't, someone back. I don't exactly. agree with that in terms of Trip, because Trip's death was bullshit. So yeah, I don't he, really agree with that. Was, if <laughs> if maybe Trip's death gave his character like a rounded edge, like it has for certain characters, I would say yeah. Yeah, what, that cheapens died, it. But the fact that Trip's death in the first place was bullshit. Yeah, he died. I'm kind of okay with it. Died trying to save Sky before she changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it yeah. They did they it. You can see the writer's hand in Trip's death, though. They're like, shock value. This is a season finale or mid-season finale. We just need somebody to die. Yeah, we need... Really was all it was. Exactly. Shock value is what that was. So, I mean... I hope they... I hope back if they, if the they do place. bring him back, I hope they keep him. I hope they keep... I mean, it sounds really bad. I mean, we, we did bring this up a little bit about the... I can't have two... You know, if it's two ethnicities. It's all these... Let's oh, kill one. I know. I, I hate that trope, and we've talked about it a couple seasons now. But but it's true, and it shouldn't be. And if they do bring him back, I hope they keep both of them. They can't kill Mac off. Everybody loves Mac now. Mm -hmm. Most people. Well, yeah. I'll unless unless they bring his daughter back, then he's going to be like, I can't do this anymore, and doesn't really kill them off. He just walks away. True. There is that. So, yeah. But love my point. I was going to. My uh, my point I was going to give about the whole you know bringing people back thing is this is the whole premise of this show, you know, it wouldn't exist if they didn't bring back a character from the dead, and but then mention it every single episode sixteen times. But who are they going to bring back? 
Did he yeah, die? Right. Did Coulson die? Did you oh, die, though? Did you die? <laughs> so I mean, also- are they going to find... Um, uh, what's his face? <laughs> I can't think of his name. Which the one? guy who died in the frame. Um, the Patriot. If they're going to find his body, are they going to make him come back to life? Or No, because no, he's in- dead in the framework. If you're alive in the framework. Yeah. He's dead in the framework know, and now dead on the outside. Sure if he's dead, they don't know for sure. They don't never recovered a body. No, but he flatlined on the outside because yeah. his avatar died. So we know there. he died. And we also know why Ada looked kind of bummed because again, Chrissy or Jake called it. You know, right last episode, they still have to protect people. Like you know, mm-hmm. Ada still has yeah. to protect them because that's her primary. I think drive. Jake pointed that out. Yeah, yeah, right. Jake did. He doesn't, out. but they don't. She doesn't have to protect Daisy and Simmons because they're, they're threatening. They're a yeah. threat to the. Yes, Jake Coulson was dead. Are you sure? Anyway, um, <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. I mean, that's the whole reason she killed Radcliffe because he created some logical paradox that made it so her killing him was actually protecting, you know, and preserving life. Yeah, she, she it switched the words around. and. Yeah. But once she's a real girl, she doesn't have to worry about that. And mm-hmm. Captain Russian N- Mick, I like to, you know, sniff an onion after I drink my vodka, is, you know... I haven't tried that, but... He's all ready to stab Coulson as soon as he possibly can. See, I've heard of eating a pickle... With a shot of vodka, but I've never heard yeah, of so sniffing cool. an onion. A pickle. That's gross. They, they, they just, they wanted him to be the most Russian he possibly could be. It enhances Where? the experience. It's not the same! He just freaked out. He's, he's still like the worst, most uninteresting character. Yeah. He's, he's, he's like almost comed- comedic value. He's like... Funny. He's like he's so over dramatic about like, the things he does. You're just laughing at him. They it's more like he's up, the sad sack. Right. They built him up like the clairvoyant in season one, and at the end of that, yeah. we got he wasn't clairvoyant. It was just an ordinary old agent, you know, Bill Paxton of Hydra. And All right, Pete, Bill Paxton. That was freaking fantastic. Because you know he made that role amazing, and yeah, he kind of was a little bit of comic relief in there, but he was still a crazy villain. Now we had the whole thing this season, the superior. Did you notice they put Bill Paxton's face on the news? Mm -hmm. As a little homage to this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Oh. (laughs) But yeah, I I noticed that right after that. Yeah, it was a nice little uh, plug there. But um, yeah, this, you know, the superior, and all of a sudden it's just like, what? I want to know what his beef is, really, what his deep down, there's something more than just he doesn't like it humans kind of thing. There's something else. There's... I feel like if there was something more, we would have found out before he died. I feel if there like, was something, I think yeah. that's as deep as he goes, and he's just that? completely uninteresting. I think, to no, be honest... I think he was hastily written because, as we found out during the midwinter break, they scrapped more Ghost Rider stuff because they couldn't, because they could no longer yeah. afford to animate his face. Because he he just seems so he does he does he's uninteresting he's he started off really good because, and then all of a sudden he just went because he was mysterious. But when the mystery dropped, it's like oh that that was a very flat it. Russian bad guy who doesn't even yeah. belong in a Bond movie. Exactly. Right. He's like a they, shitty Bond villain. Yeah. He doesn't a, have it. There's no reason. His only reason is because he thinks Coulson brought the Inhumans. Okay, that's not so really. So yeah, that. No, you're right. That's his deeper beef. We were talking about. Yeah. I completely forgot about it because it's utterly ridiculous. Yeah, we had that reveal, and it's just not interesting. He <laughs> thinks Coulson's an alien. But why? It's like why did he? It doesn't well, make any sense. It's he like, blames. He blames Coulson for everything. Yeah, there's things missing. Yeah. And there's things missing. You are the man that is there when everything goes bad. It's like, oh, oh, oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I mean, how about the, there's no pictures of Coulson th- the, during the incident because he was dead. 
I know. Where's all these pictures? Like when he got arrested and shit, and there's all those news crews. Where was like, the pictures? If Coulson mm -hmm. was standing somewhere on Stark Tower when you know that portal opened, then I can understand you know really being paranoid. Like this but man. Also, this man everywhere. He do it. But those the Chitari are not related at all to the Kree or the Inhumans. No. No. That, that's what gets me mad. Somebody, the, one of them drew the parallel between the incident and, and humans. I'm just like, not the same aliens, guys. Come on. There's something, I don't know. I, I think they might have written something but that was behind his reasons or something else. But they're not giving it to us or they scrapped it or they just said, fuck it. We're just going to make him a robot. Or we had a better villain in mind and we can't really use him without Ghost Rider yeah, and stuff. So we're know. just going to... They... They did, I'm not gonna say it's not bad know, to look at, but you know, they sometimes did I want to say look they did say we were supposed to have Mephisto this season, and that seems to have gone right out the fucking window. So that could have been, you know, their bigger, scarier villain, and they scrapped it. Could have. This could have been a last minute thing. I don't know. Either way, every time he comes on, I'm just like, eh. I just love. Okay, I love the alternate roles, people. Like. You know, Mr. Bakshi is... <laughs> he's still spineless as ever. He's still kissing up to people. <laughs> he's, he's like... Yeah. I, I don't know what to equate them to. He's, he's like, you know... He, ha you know, has a hate-spewing talk show on TV. Like, his name... You know, he, he, I, don't, I, I don't know who to parallel him to, really. I like that they brought back some of these characters that were or de are dead in mm -hmm. the real world and stuff. So it's kind of cool to kind of see. Kind of nice to see them again. At the yeah. same time, they're never. You're not. You're the same as you were on the outside than you are on the inside. You're still a spineless little worm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they um, he he came on screen. And it was he was like the news reporter, and I was like, oh, I kind of missed you, you little shit. Just <laughs> right? a little bit. A little yeah. bit. It's like, you know, all this terrible stuff. Like, you know. The Patriot attacked a school or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> All this other stuff, but it doesn't matter because he's dead now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like when, the, you know, when they finally took over the stage. He's already, oh, you can't make me say anything. And, it's like, we and don't need James to say like, anything. <laughs> and he's like, whatever. He's like, yeah. I'll say whatever you want. <laughs> it's like, I will say, it's like, you know, so you just put it in writing, you know, <laughs> write it down for me. <laughs> Put it on the teleprompter. Oh, yeah, that was it. Put it on the teleprompter. Yeah, no, no problem. That, yeah, you got it. He's still that spineless. Uh, he plays that role really, really well, he though. Does. <laughs> but, you know, school te paranoid school teacher Coulson stepped up to the plate and gave a lovely speech with footage. But and does he really remember? Probably not. 100%. Probably not, but he's probably like, you know, getting that confidence back. Because as yeah, you put it, you know, getting some memories back. Because I mean, he's when May was doing this tie and stuff. He's like, I like deja vu, man. Mm -hmm. And you know, I always felt, you know, that means I'm on the right track. And it's like, well, yeah, because you're doing shit you probably did before, at some mm -hmm. point. Yeah, gets I on think there. we've seen that between the two of them, anyways. Gives that the one. whole speech, you know. I am Phil Coulson, and I am an agent of Shield. And I love how he drops the alternative facts line in there, and I'm just like, ah. Oh. oh, I know. Now it's too real. So he, what I expected to happen, because he took off his regular glasses, I thought he was going to put sunglasses on. I was about to, like, You're roll waiting the floor. for it? I was waiting for him to put uh, sunglasses on. Oh, my God. Uh, so, yeah, they threw that in there, and, it, you know... Fake news, alternative facts. Exactly. But apparently that got some, you know, people riled up and they're there to help Good. S.H.I.E.L.D. hold off HYDRA. Which, Phil, you know, Coulson had a great point. There's a lot more of us than there are of them. Simple numbers mm -hmm. game. So we'll see if, um, if Ward makes it. I mean, he's already prepared to die because he knows he's dead anyways. Dead outside in her world, so... And if this world is fake, then, you know, what's he got to lose? Oh, yeah. Help everybody out there. And I do love the fact he's like, if you leave, do I get my sky back? And I'm like... Yeah. Oh. 
So, you know? Oh, uh, sweetie. We might. He, he might. He might. We don't know. That might we happen. Know. We don't know. Uh, if they come out, are they going to totally just dismantle the framework and then everyone's just gone? I don't. Honestly, if we're going by morals, I don't think they will be able to because these. There were a number. They, they're, it's a functioning society, sort of, and they're kind of like they uh, seem to have all feelings and emotions and all that stuff. Oh, robot! Even if it's a computer. But, but uh, they it kind of reminds me. It reminds me of the Doctor Who episode, uh, the library, where he um, plugs in River's consciousness into the like mainframe, and then everyone that died was in the. I don't know if you've never watched Doctor Who. I'm sorry. It reminds. So what's, it reminds me of about six different episodes of Star Trek that deal with the same thing. Yeah. Um, they bring that up a lot. And one, I remember one episode of The Next Generation. I, can't, I think it was the one episode where, you know, the fake version of Professor Moriarty, like, became self-aware and took over the damn ship. Which, stop using the holodeck if it's going to come to life and take over, for fuck's sake. That was like a dozen episodes yeah. plot right there. But... Yeah. I think that was it. It could have been a different episode. They took a bunch of programs. They put them in a small computer that was the size of a suitcase that yeah. was programmed to be a complete... Like, it was a section of the galaxy big enough that, you know, they would never explore it in a human lifetime. But they were programmed to live out a human lifetime, and at the end of that, they would just be deleted. Yeah. I mean, like in the library... And that's what it was. It was just like this huge computer in the middle of the library that everyone that they downloaded was in there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, so, exactly. What do they do with the people in the framework? Because they've obviously achieved consciousness. They've inter yeah, they've interacted with them. I mean, it's kind of, it would be kind of hard to just kind of scrap it. I mean, I could see them putting it in a, <laughs> in a little box somewhere and uh, keeping it safe so no one else can, you know, destroy it. But... What exactly they're gonna do with it? That's a big can. Or will or will Ada destroy it once she gets the body? Or she gets the human body? Mm-hmm. Could be one of those like giant wall computers. Possibly. So might not really be able to put that in a box. Yeah, probably not. Hey, hey, they can use dark hole technology and you know miniaturize it. <laughs> Good point. Uh So let's see. Fitz is still evil and is now the director of Hydra. He's just about done with Project Looking Glass. Oh, Simmons and Trip steal a Quinjet. Hey, nobody in charge to tell us no. I love right. that. I know. Like, it reminded me of season one when they had their adventures. Uh-huh. Exactly. I miss that so much. I do, too. I do, I do like the fact, you know, when they went into the thing, and she's like, it's here. He's like, there's nothing here. She's like, no, it's here in the other world. I know this is where it's at. And it's that's just, when she figures out what Aid is doing. It's just in a separate... Mm -hmm. It's like a parallel universe almost. It's just... It's it's there. She knows where it is. Now if she got out, she could tell everyone where it's at. But good luck with that one. Very much so. Uh, there was another thing I wanted to mention, and it... Whew, out the window. Well, and then um, Fitz's dad realizes that him and that uh, uh, Daisy and um, Radcliffe were talking between the walls. Right, that's right. You know, he let um, that slip. Yeah, but I don't think I think Radcliffe would rather die right now at this point. He has nothing to live for than tell him anything. No, exactly. He has nothing to live for and nothing to lose. Yeah, I mean, so why talk? realistically. That's the only thing he has. He has nothing else. He doesn't know anything else. They want to know where they are. He doesn't know shit. And they think he and they're sitting here thinking he does. It's like the no. last thing he knows is that um Yeah, you know, Daisy got her powers back just by what he heard through the wall. But he I think he already knows that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And I mean, maybe they're like he doesn't have to tell anything. I mean, the only thing he knows is where the back door exit is. Yep. And apparently she can't do anything about it. Which will probably piss her off. I mean, the only thing she can do about it is station guards near it. Mm-hmm. So, I, we don't know exactly what exactly the back door is. I mean, we know 
where it is. We just don't know what exactly it is. I'd love it if it's, you know, a back door to a house. If it's a, a, a literal It's a literal door. back door. Yeah. That'd be I mean, hilarious. Yeah. That would be so much Well, the, the machine that, um, the looking glass that they're building looks like the, the portal that fits me to go get Gemma out of the weird planet she was on. I, I forgot what they called that. Mm-hmm. But it looks like that. Yeah, it kind of hey, does. He might have, he might have you know, taken, you know, taken the design. Gotten an idea from that. Yeah. Pop, I mean, he still know. fits, but every time he breaks away to yeah, be, you know, to, you know, be, become problems. that fits that we know, it's like his dad swoops in and is like, hey, it's like, if hey, I wanted you to be a wuss, I would have left you with your mama. Man up. And then every time he says that, what does Fitz do? He goes like this. He stands straight up. Like, he, he, hmm. he stands straight up, man's up, even to the point of, you're right, I have to put on a face. That means I can't yeah. tolerate failure, even from my own yeah. father. And well, I'm just like, oh, God, please shoot him now. I've noticed it. It's, yeah, just, really. it's, it's very subtle. It's very subtle little things. And I don't know if they meant it to be that way, but it's coming off that way. If they did, that's really amazing. <laughs> like well, when he said don't, when he told Fitz not to snap at him, Fitz flinched like an injured dog, like when you beat a, like mm-hmm. he's been beaten, obviously, by his uh-huh. father. He was, he was abused by that. That to be the, abused by a man. Whether, that to be the not, reaction. whether or not it was physical, uh, mental can be just as bad. But no, I know, but he flinched like he was going to get hit. He definitely, he definitely was probably once or twice, or three or four, five or six. Dozen. <laughs> right? Yeah. But he was, I think the majority of the abuse is probably mental. Mm-hmm. Psychological kind of thing. Um, yeah, probably. Did I miss anything this episode? Ada wants to be a real girl. She knew. Oh. Yeah, and she's telling, she, and then she's, she's, I think she's figuring out that they are, they're smarter then they look. They're stronger than they look. Mm-hmm. With May remembering, breaking through, breaking it apart, and Colson breaking off, and them actually finding each other again, which is, you know, I don't think she thought would ever happen. I mean, um, that's why she told she told Fitz just finish it. Don't worry about them. When you finish it, it they won't matter. I mean, May is basically, you know, mm-hmm. she does her duty. She's you know, very honor bound in that regard. And hey, her superiors tell her that's the enemy. She's going to do everything in her power to remove the enemy, even if it is kind of an immoral gray area, or mm-hmm. even worse than that. But you know, as she said it, seeing someone who's supposed to be the enemy, like a terrorist, risk their life to save you, and you know, mm-hmm. die doing it, you kind of got to stop and think: Am I on the right side? Yeah, she's questioning everything, and I think. By that simple act of her question, I think she's starting to get some of the memories back. I think she's starting to so like, wait a minute. It's like two dudes. Dre- it was a, uh, I forget what skit it's from, but it's two young guys dressed in Nazi uniform uniforms, and one looks at the other and goes, "Hans, are these are bad guys." Mm-hmm. It's basically you know what happened to May right there. It's like, are we the bad yeah. guys? Like, I care about that. <laughs> She doesn't. She does. She's. She doesn't know. And I think. Well, and also, retarded Russian guy. He was like, "Well, that's human. That's so human of her. You know, of that." He's all excited, like you know, I'm gonna get a real body again, and I'm gonna be free of this restriction. Like she's gonna let you. Like she's gonna let you exactly. She. I mean, that means you're gonna have to plug yourself into the framework, move yourself to that location, and get looking glassed into a real body again. She is not going to let you. She's going to come out of there with no restriction and put a bullet in your fucking head. Or she oh. put some restriction in his... Another restriction in his code. Or that. To where he... Well, doesn't, he, doesn't she just have to, you know, kill the original head? Because I mean, isn't she, he connected to that? That's true. What? He's she a head has in the jar. Head. He's a head in the jar. She has it connected to his oh. body. He's yeah. Like in some, he's in a mini framework. Or something. Oh, he's like, yeah, he's right. A, that's right. He's a head in the jar, controlling yeah, so a robotic body. That. So oh, all she, she has to do is shatter the jar. I forgot about that. It reminds me of that. Uh, 
Yeah, I, for, I forgot about that too. Yeah, she, he's a head in a jar. The man with two brains. Mm-hmm. All right, so I'm going to mention. And he's still he's such an idiot. He is. Yeah. So I'm going to mention next week's podcast, uh, next week's episode. It's called Farewell, Cruel World. Ominous. Um, snippet. The clock is ticking for Daisy and Simmons to get the team out of the framework. That's right. Um, but not everyone is ready and willing to leave. I'm going to go with Mac. Mac. He's going to be the big one there. Um, well, Mac doesn't have to leave. Well, he does, but he doesn't. I don't know. It's kind of hard. It's like one of those things, like, that Mac, I guess, could stay there, but I don't know. And then you get into the moral area but, of, you know... Who do they bring back with them if they can? Do they use that? Technology? He's plugged in. Max plugged in. Right, yeah, he is plugged in. But I'm saying, yeah, he's so not, he needs to leave. But, but he's but, not going to want to. But if he leaves, if he leaves, just like the whole sky thing, if they leave, does the other person come back that was there in the, in the frame? Or, or does like if he leaves, is gone and his daughter's there by herself? Oh, he's going to be no. That's the thing though. He was, you know. He was plugged into it, and, like, his memory altered and everything. You know, the sky that was in there was just a programmed analog that was taken over by her. So, I don't know if anything's going to be left behind when Mac goes. And that's going to be rough, because originally, he never knew his daughter, right? There was a miscarriage, I think it was? No, no, she got hit by a car. Oh, that was it. She was, like, she was, you know, six or seven. I thought she, I she thought got she hit by a car. That was it, old. right. She got hit by a car. No, because it was the bicycle. Yeah, you're right. She, she was riding her bicycle and got hit by a car. And then when we see her for the first time, well, we don't see her. We see Mac and it pans to a child's bicycle. And she's like, oh. Uh, uh, right, so she was a lot. She was younger. So now yeah. he's known her until she's like 10, 11, and she's a tech genius like him. Or, you yeah. know, a budding engineer. And, oh boy. So... Is that she needs to? She needs to come out of the framework. Is that ethically acceptable her. for them to, you know, create someone who died? You know, the world it's like it's it's like it's like um, in our other show we have about time. I mean, it's like an, an, you're creating the anomaly. I mean, this like person didn't exist in your world, and you're creating them into, the, or this person died in your world, but you're bringing them back. So it's just it's it's like. There's like this weird, even though you should, even though you could, the, but should you? Yeah. Even though you can do it, should it's, you do it's it? It's the it's the Jeff Goldblum quote from Jurassic Park. It's like, you yeah. know, you're so caught up th- no, thinking that you could, you know, you didn't stop to ask whether you, whether should. you should. So that's pretty much what's going to happen in the next couple episodes. Yeah. Yeah, it's just one. Of, it's one of those moral dilemmas. I miss this. Jacob and Chat said Bobby and Hunter come back. <laughs> I do yeah. miss them and their sassy. I do. Their their forth. their way to come back in the show is not the framework because though. they're not dead. Because they're not dead. They just took the fall for you know. Yeah. Some something stupid bullshit. Coulson did. Mm-hmm. They're and, off in some remote. Tropical island loving each other up. Exactly. That's all we need to know. <laughs> Drinking anyway, some drinks on the beach. I'm going to say that's our show because. Yeah. The there's stuff is there's a lot. Of, yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can add into and a lot of theories and a lot of. Mm-hmm. <sighs> so mind next, fucks. Yep. <laughs> next week, more mind fucks. Cleo, where can they find you? You can find me at Cleo Moto. Just... To the point. <laughs> I love it. Rachel, how about you? You can find me at Twi- Twitter at VikingWitch76 and on Twitch at VikingWitch. Those Mike, watches, you have a challenge. I, I noticed. Those who watch us regularly will notice that our fourth box is, is empty, and that's because Jacob got held up at work tonight. But he has said in chat for someone to <clears> do <throat> his outro, so you could find him on... Not <laughs> you could find him on Twitter at Jacob Salazar. A tweet to him throughout the week, throughout the life at Jacob Salazar, that's J... I... my god. To Nowhere Land! That's no, To Nowhere Land. Oh my god, His see Twitter what I'm doing? Sa- Jacob Salazar oh, on, on, on YouTube, I but it, on Twitter, tweet to at me, To Nowhere Land. T-O-W-H-E-R-E 
Yeah, I'm trying to do the whole thing and I'm failing. Join the Nowhere Land Society. I can't spell. I did it. I'm so spell. sorry, Jake. Jake. I butchered Jake, I would it, do it mercilessly. He needs to write it down so he has it in front of him. <laughs> I'm gonna write it down and I'm gonna save it in a notepad. So if I ever have to do that again. You can find me on Twitter at Philadream. You can find all of us on Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, Google Plus, MySpace, and YouTube at ASOTV Podcast. You can follow us at those places for some more podcasts for some of your favorite TV shows, movies, and games. Whew. I can do that just fine. Thanks all for watching. Good night. There's no spelling in that. You're right. The spelling, you fail. The spelling is, you know, what drives me nuts. You need to just you record it. You this podcast. You need to just record it and then have a clip it so when he's not there, just play it. <laughs>